two other Southern Hemisphere cities to host the Olympics. Jim Owens gets Matthew Mitchum, Dave O'Neill, Randy, plus Costa Rica shot down. Tonight on the Full Brazilian. Much. Welcome, welcome all to the full Brazilian. All right, we're near the end, near the pointy end. Costa Rica are gone. Aww. Belgium's gone, yes. Aww. But we find a star in the Dutch keeper, uh, Tim Krul, who he saved all the goals. <laughs> yes, I have saved the ball. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Mum. <laughs> sorry, Mum. No. All oh, right. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, knocked, I knocked her glasses off there. <laughs> sorry about that. OK, we've got four teams left. Only four teams left and four coaches left, all of which look like uh, James Bond villains. Let's have a look. <laughs> there he is, the, fella, the nasty James Bond villain. There he is right there. You whack him, love. You whack him, love, evil. And then, of course, there's Van Hal, the Dark Lord, Van Hal. Yes, don't look, don't look, look away. Don't look, look away. Yes, of course. And then there's one more. There's the Brazilian coach, Luis Felipe Scolares, who just looks like your dodgy uncle. <laughs> Yes, calm down, calm down. <laughs> They're dodgy uncle. <laughs> OK, Sapella, the Argentinian coach, you would swear he was shot during the Argentinian game. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, say it again. You just go one more time, just back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking there. All right, we have the uh, Dutch fans, uh, good-looking people, good-looking girls and the Dutch fans. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 and then there's this one, yeah, yeah, what? Oh, my God, I think her, her breeding days are over, aren't they? Yeah. Imagine waking up next to that, you think, oh, I'll never drink again, never getting drunk, <laughs> never again. It's amazing what you can find in the fridge when you're drunk. Uh, you open up a fridge when you're sober, you go, there's nothing in that fridge. You open up the same fridge when you're drunk and you go, ho oh, oh, ho. <laughs> my favourite, lettuce and yoghurt. <laughs> I'll just fry that up in a pan. Because <laughs> you always fry things up in a pan. Doesn't matter if they're fried already, you think, fried again. <laughs> that's what I want. Dirty, stinking, greasy food. <laughs> Healthy food doesn't have a look in when you're drunk. Uh, you never come out of a pub drunk and think to yourself, oh, I'd love an apple right now. <laughs> if somebody give you an apple, you go right fried up in a the pan there. Because <laughs> somebody told you that if you line your stomach with grease, then your hangover isn't as bad the following day. Did someone tell you that? Yeah. <laughs> Did they have a moustache? <laughs> OK, different bloke. <laughs> um, Hot dogs are what you want when you're drunk. Uh, hot dogs, by the way, are the only two words you can say when you're really drunk. Hot and dog. Uh, have you ever tried Aston for steam dim sims? <laughs> You've had a few? I sim sim sim. I sim 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 sim. Hot dog. <laughs> All right, we've got a big show for you tonight. The full <laughs> We're only, we're only three more shows to go. We're nearly yeah. there. It's near the end. It is. Two big games once again last night. Yeah, massive what games. What did you think? What did you think? Yeah, look, I don't know if it was just the 2am factor, but um, Argentina-Belgium turned into a bit of a 
frustrating affair. Um, not from an Argentinian perspective. This was probably their best team effort. Uh, Sabella pulled in a, a few changes, really freshened things up. Uh, they were more defensively resolute than we've seen throughout the tournament. Yeah, yeah. So great performance by them. Uh, everything went to plan. But for Belgium, this was... This was hugely disappointing, to be, to be deadly honest. Like, with that squad at their disposal, the amount of players that they had, Delini. tactically, it was baffling what they were doing. Uh, they played for la vast sections of the game without form. Uh, to, to not get the best out of Hazard, Fellaini looked lost for large, large sections of that game. Uh, so it was very, very disappointing for the Belgians. Uh, I would go so far as to say the worst coaching performance of, of the Cup from, from Wilmot. Uh, let's have a look at the action there. So this was the Argentinian goal, came very early. Great lead up from Messi. Uh, a bit of a deflection, yes, but instinctive finish from Higuain. Great, great moment for him. He's had a disappointing tournament, and this will really raise his confidence. He's just snatched it the first time and brilliantly put away. Uh, the Belgians did have a few chance. Kevin De Bruyne was one of their better performers. He's been great throughout the tournament. Unlucky that that didn't fall to a teammate. Watch this pass. That is the pass of the tournament from Lionel Messi. Just the weight, the balance, inc incisive work there. Accompanied as well to keep it out. Jesus Messi feet. wasn't his best performance, but he was everything he did was good. He drew a lot of attention from the Belgian defenders. Uh, this was a great <gasps> moment. This was their oh. best chance of the game. Uh, very few occasions they actually got the fullbacks coming forward, whipping in dangerous crosses like that. That one was good. Higuain's confidence was rising. Very, very close to a second. He was upset, not as much as Sabella. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was the, the trust exercise. I think it was, was it? a trust yeah. exercise. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. one caught him. Uh, Fellaini had a chance here. If you're going to play to your strengths, that's what the Belgians should have been looking for, just hitting balls into their tall players. Oh. Uh, Messi one on one uh, should, with Courtois. Right Courtois got a great record against him. This is right at the death. A real chance. Brilliant defending there. Witzel half a moment and then. Oh. Just blazes it over. So, end of the tournament for the Belgians. Disappointing for their fans, but great moment for the Argentinians. They, they roll on. Yes. Uh, one small blemish. Uh, Di Maria went off injured. One of their better, better performers he's across out. the tournament. So, he's now out with Aguero out as well. So, mm. tough break for the Argentinians. And once again, the Argentinians just scraped through. Yeah. And no more, not by a lot. Just got one goal. Yeah. And then some blatant time-wasting mm -hmm. from uh, is it Enzo Perez towards the... They just lay down... And started doing a dead end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with them. Last, last little flickers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nothing. This is just in the 90th minute. Yeah. He just yeah. sort of the lie down. And then he just got up. Nothing wrong yeah. with him. <laughs> he went off, sir. I was way so, out. Yeah, yes. yeah. He should have been dragged off. Yep. Uh, one of the Belgian players, he wasn't too happy mm -hmm. about being substituted. Um, Morales. Yeah, Morales went right. off. Oh, like, uh, oh petulant. Kid. I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, he's not. So. He's not. That's it. It's <laughs> over for him. Fair yeah. enough. I can understand. Now, um, another massive game, Netherlands-Costa Rica. Look, this was the, the fairy tale story for the World Cup, the, the minnows from uh, Central America. Um, and they've gone out, but done so with their heads held high. Another great defensive uh, rearguard action from them. We saw against Greece very, very sound uh, for the first half, and then the game became a bit more open. The Dutch, for their part, were, were happy to kind of keep possession, not, not challenge too much, but the game really came to life. In the second half, let's have a look at some of the highlights there. Now, look, we've been talking about Ian Robin, Robin van Persie, but don't forget Schneider. This is the guy. Schneider. This is the guy that put Brazil out of the last World Ooh, Cup. And as, the, ga as the games go on, set pieces become more and more important. So, great moment there. Watch this. Oh. How, how they how they fail to score from this scenario Four is of them. amazing. Comes ball comes across the front. Somehow, Coit and someone else, uh, Dirk Kout. Someone else One, just two, avoids three. it. What did he do? It falls there? to Van Persie. Brilliant defence on the line oh. there, just onto the bar. Uh, so, so nervous moments at the back. Costa Rica had their chances. This came later in the game. If this goes in, suddenly you think, "Gosh, we're talking upset." So a fine, fine save by Sillison. The uh, um, um, Maynor, I think it was, with a shot. And the uh, fans gutted for that. Guess who? Wesley Schneider. Schneider. Brilliant, oh. brilliant curling effort here. Cannon's off the crossbar, unlucky for him, and I think one of the players gets in the way on the follow-up. Great, great, great effort there. Oh. So within inches, this was an interesting moment. 119th minute, keeper sub. So brought on Tim Krull, especially for the penalties. It's a great move. Whether he's a penalty expert, OK, he, he goes on to prove that. But even as a psychological thing, you say, if we're bringing this guy on, he must be good. 
RVP puts his away. No dramas. The Dutch very clinical. Great save from Krull. Look at that. Gets down low. That's the captain, Brian Ruiz. And this one's even better. Amana was the hero in the penalties against Greece. He's the villain in this case. But really, it's about Krull's save rather than... That penalty is so great, great work. Yes, yes. And we should be talking about Cruel later yep. in the show. I think it's a yep. brilliant moment. Yep. Brilliant, tactful move. But I haven't time for this. Mm -hmm. I have a taxi to catch. OK. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I go on, just get him. Hey, mate, how are you? Uh, bond, Bondi, please. Yeah. <laughs> Where um, to, sorry? Yeah, can you just move the seat a bit forward? It's a bit tight. Oh, yeah, mate, I can do that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. There That's right, we go. Yeah, That's uh, plenty of oh, room there yeah, for you, mate. Bondi, please, All yes. All right, let me just start the meter and... Yep. Uh, Mm. Start the car here. Oh, mm. Just taking a bit of time to get started. Yeah, yeah, it's yep. hey, there we there go. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're away. Yeah. yeah, we're all of a sudden in the country. No, I know, look how at that. that. Happened. <laughs> You're in it America, by like the looks of things. It does, it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, right, yeah. It's a new car, this one. It's one of those electric ones, you know. Yeah, look, yeah. I don't even have to handle it. It just goes on its own. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> 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 Oh, sorry, mate, I'll grab that. No. What's it's that? not like my old car. I used to have to climb in through the window. You did? Yeah. You ever climbed in through a window? Yeah, when I was young, there was a lot of climbing through windows when I was younger. That small window in the bathroom, oh, the one yeah. that you had to get your leg through. And then you got to get your other leg yeah. through. Yeah, and you get to get your upper body, and there's those two little spiky things you've got to try. <laughs> yeah, you got to squeeze through. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your balaclava's gone all skew with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've dropped your gun in you've the toilet. You've dropped gun, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah terrible. Happy memories of those, yes. Hey, um... Don't I know you from the telly? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, the guy. you're that guy, are you? From yep. the telly, yeah. Glenn yep. Robbins, right? No. No, oh, right. Uh, Dave no. O'Neill, Dave no. O'Neill, is that you? No. no. no? Oh. Jim Owen. No, no, I don't think that's it. <laughs> Carl Barron, Carl Barron, that's it, that's it. Isn't it? Oh, it's good. You're doing that. You're doing that show on SBS, aren't you? That, uh, yes, that soccer I am. show. Yes, I am. The, uh, the full Monty. No. The full Brazilian. No, no, I don't think that's it. But you must be loving the soccer. Yeah, I can't. Oh, get how about that. Belgium, eh? Belgium are good, yeah. yeah. Love waffles. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you don't like the players? No, or? I love the waffles. I love the waffles. Oh, what about Algeria? Hmm? Yeah, what about them? How good is yeah. couscous? Oh <laughs> delicious. Do you not like you don't like the game? You don't watch the no, game? No, what about Colombia, eh? Columbia, what about them? How hot is the mum from Modern Family? Yeah. She's, she's <laughs> Colombian. Yeah. Yeah. What about Rodriguez, though, the player? Are you not interested in the game? No, well, if we're talking about the game, it's got to be Australian, hasn't it? Yeah, of course. Aussie rules, mate. Best game in the world. Uh, just let me out of here. That's fine. Just Thank here, you right? Much. I'll just stop the car there. How much is that? <clears throat> Uh, oh, oh, hang on, I've just got to stop. I've just got to pull over. We're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just pulling over. Stop, okay, now, uh, it's, stop, uh, the, stop the monitor. <laughs> that, that, that'll be $77.50, thanks, mate. Wow, that's a bit yeah. steep. Tolls, mate. Didn't you see all the tolls we went through? <laughs> yeah, I haven't got a wallet. Uh, you'll oh, have, you have to go back to my, Okay, I'll back go back. To house. Back in it up, oh, back yeah. in it up. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, there we go. <laughs> Got to figure out how to, if you could just move your head there, mate. I'm going, we're going very quickly backwards. Yeah, it's very are. fast. Here, just stop here. Stop here. Does that's this fine. Do? I'll do? just go here. That's fine. Okay, great. Where's my money? Here, hang on. I've got something in my pocket for you. Here oh, it is. Fantastic. Oh! Oh! I feel so bad. 
family here with us. And I believe it was your birthday. A happy birthday, yeah, by the way. Thanks. And this is this is Mum. Yes. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. Yes, Mum, all right. So how do you think you're going to go in the semi-finals? We're going to win it. Of course. <laughs> Squash oranges, yes, well, of course. Netherlands, of course. We'll see you after the break with Nazim in Brazil and much more in the full Brazil. <laughs> Jamon, are you a good goalkeeper? No. No. Awful. All right, well, SBS are giving you the chance to test your goalkeeping skills against some of the greatest spot kicks in World Cup history. Simply download the free SBS Shootout app and get saving. SBS will be running these famous shots from Beckham to Zidane throughout the coverage of the World Cup. So go to the website and play for your chance to win a Kia Proceed GT. OK, all right, it's time to catch up with Nazim Hussein in Brazil. How's real? Oh, it's great. It's great. I don't know if I'm getting a bit emotional from being away from home for so long, but being in Rio, surrounded by all these passionate fans, has just reminded me how beautiful people are, Jamon, you know? Yeah, yeah all right. You, you've seen some, uh, some of the people that you've been talking to. Most of them seem drunk. Uh, do you... <laughs> I know about any beautiful ones? No way, Jamal. They're beautiful and I can prove it. Uh, today I organised my own beauty pageant for World Cup fans. From the magnificent beaches of Rio, today we're going to experience the most beautiful event on Earth. The Miss or Mr World Cup pageant! Wow! So excited! I'm here with a potential Miss World Cup. What's your name? Adriana. Okay, and where are you from? Brazil. From Australia. From Brazil. From Mexico. In England. In the United States. From Mexico. From Argentina. In Germany. In Brazil. Czech Republic. Canada. From Argentina. From the Netherlands. This is the fashion category. I want to see you as the best national outfit. Can you tell us about your outfit? Why? No, is this a Canadian national outfit? Oh, no. Right. I don't think so, because it's too cold in Canada. I really love this outfit. <laughs> I absolutely love it. You got pockets, both sides. Wow. I want to be Mr. World Cup. Pageants are not just about beauty. They're also about brains. This is the interview section. Why should you be Mr. World Cup? Uh, I'm at the World Cup. I'm a man. I think I feel the basic criteria, really. For a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not very important, 10 being very important, how important is world peace? 11. World peace is not going to, that's not, that's not possible, man. Uh, how do you define love? That's a tricky question when you've got to keep it G-rated. Love is the most important. It's beautiful. <laughs> what is the biggest number in the world? The biggest number? Yeah. Uh, number one. How do you propose we reduce income inequality in developing countries? Oh my God, it's so complicated to explain in English <laughs> in France. I don't know. If you want to make it in the world of pageants, you need a talent. It's called the, the finger twist, and it's not what you're thinking. Olha que coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça. Wasn't probably that. That was phenomenal. Yeah. It's still going. Oh my god. All right, we don't have a sash, we don't have a tiara, but I can give you this key ring. Oh. Miss World Cup 2014. It's a key ring. The World Cup key ring. So, woo! Yay! Well, that was Miss or Mr. World Cup 2014. See you in four years. Thank you, Nadine. Hope we see you tomorrow night. OK, it's now time to bring on the full Brazilian panel. Once again, we've got Richard, pa Richard Parkin, Servette Uzenlar from the Matilda. And please welcome Dave O'Neill. Go Argentina, that's what I say. Yeah, yeah. come on. Okay. <laughs>
Have, have you played football in your day? Yeah, I played for Melbourne Victory. Did you? No, hang on, I support them. Sorry, yeah, I got that wrong. Right. Um, <laughs> no, I went to a high school that was attached to an immigrant hostel. So in the 70s and the 80s, we had a lot of Argentinians, Chileans, Vietnamese, Yugoslavs, Greeks, Italians. Yeah, woohoo! And Melbourne, basically. Yeah, yeah, Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne. Yeah. And um, they all played football. And so they used to reenact some of the World Cup moments. <laughs> so I saw the uh, I saw the Maradona hand of God. I saw that reenacted on the over. Right. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I was uh, I was given the job of Maradona's drug dealer. So, <laughs> so I got the whiz fizz out, and yeah, it was pretty good. It was good. Okay. <laughs> Our guest tonight is Olympic gold medal winning diver Matthew Mitchum. Matthew will arrive. <laughs> Matthew is going to arrive performing his gold medal winning dive, a back two and a half somersault with two and a half twists. Are you ready, Ooh. Matthew? Just yeah. about. All right. Oh. All right, okay, I'm ready when you are, Jamon. Just give me the signal. Okay, go! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. me. Have you have you been watching any games? No, because they're on at like <laughs> two o'clock in the morning, and I have to get up at five o'clock for training. So right. I watch the highlight reels at the later in the day. It is. It is ridiculous time to be mm. getting up for training. Yeah. Why do you have to get up at five in the morning for training? Why can't you I just train in the middle of the day? Pools, pools are open. <laughs> yeah. Pools are open now if you yeah. really try. What, what time is it? <laughs> well, it's it's like you go at 11. There's no one yeah. there at 11. Have you ever brought that up? Just saying, this is a ridiculous time in the morning to be in a swimming pool. Yes, course. yes, every day. Every right. single day. And they just don't. No. And then later in the day, what do you do? Do you sleep later in the day? Then, then I do uni or, um, or oh, interviews or, you know, this kind of stuff. And then I train again in the afternoon. So that's why it's such an early session, because we have to fit two in in the day. Right. Yeah, and then enough time for recovery between the sessions. And you're uh, preparing for the Com Games. Is yes, that I'll be in Glasgow in two weeks. I'll be oh. <laughs> If you did miss it then, one of the stars of the morning was obviously Lionel Messi. Uh, we know that James Rodriguez has gone home. We know that Neymar's out injured. So this is about the best we've got left of the World Cup. He is a brilliant, brilliant player. Uh, this morning actually marked the 91st appearance he's made for the national team, which equals Maradona's uh, uh, appearances. Oh, wow. So obviously the comparison yeah. are going to come once again. He's Maradona's yeah. this, yeah. this massive figure of Argentinian football, so there's always the comparisons. We'll have a look here. Here's the stats. So both 91 caps. Mm. Messi's in fact scored more goals than Maragon Maradona, oh. but I guess... The difference being Maradona's goals came in these big events. We know about the 86 World Cup, we know about Hand of God and the goal of the century. Uh, so I guess a lot of people are expecting that, that Messi will score something like that to, to bring the cup home for You Argentina. shouldn't use the word score and Maradona in yeah, the same yeah. sentence. <laughs> 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 Let's hope his off-field behaviour doesn't yeah, you know, yeah. do a well, Maradona. Actually, that's, that's a key point. Why yeah. is it that Argentina loves... Diego Maradona so much. That, that's part of the flawed character of Diego. Messi very much looks like a... a, a is he a flawed character to... too or is he pretty straight? Is he a Christian? Unless he's or... been no, hiding he's very, it. very, very straight. Yeah. Oh. I bet he's, I bet he's a demon somewhere. We just don't yes. know about it. <laughs> he's very good. Man. Yeah. Well, everyone yeah. loves a bit of a salacious story. Mm. So, you know, if he's a bit too straight-laced, people mm. might be bored with him. Mm. Mm. You mm. suggesting anything from your <laughs> history you want to <laughs> tell the nation? to say? Read the book. Any gossip on Messi? Mm. You don't even know who he is, really, do you? No. <laughs> you don't really care. Now, look, one of, the, one of the big moments of drama that we get in football is this, this penalty shootout. And we saw this this morning, uh, the Dutch versus Costa Rica. In a team sport, it's one of the few moments where an individual is on focus. Now, obviously, in your sport, you know all about the pressure that comes with those key moments. Mm. What do you do to hold your nerve at those massive moments? It's all about the preparation mm -hmm. and so if you know that you haven't done everything possible in the lead up to that big, that one big event, that's when you're packing yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing someone who's as professional, and like someone who's got the ball handling skills and the fancy footwork like Messi, like he's just, you know, he's apparently one of, I hear, 
mm. you know, one of the um, most gifted Adorable. soccer mm. players um, alive at the moment. And so, um, you know, some people just have that natural talent, but a lot of it is in the preparation. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you sometimes feel that, you know, it's maybe like an off day? Because I know when I take a penalty, like sometimes I actually don't feel like so, so confident, even mm. though I have prepared in moments of pressure, you just, mm. you know, you don't have that, that sort of... Yeah, How I mean, do you try and get yourself back into the zone or... Do you have any strategies that you use? It took me years to learn how to compete. Like, I'm talking years and years and years. And so, I guess the more I competed, um, you know, whenever I something happened, I made a mistake or whatever, um, I analysed that. I figured out, you know, what was going through my mind at the time and, you know, I could, tried to figure out if I could change small things. Mm -hmm. And so, it was a learning process throughout my entire career and it all just kind of culminated into that, you know, in the perfect time in Beijing. Well, speaking of that perfect time in Beijing, we've got some vision of this. Can you talk us through what's going through your mind here? Okay, this don't is... mess it up, don't mess yeah. it up, don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Going through the motions. What? No, <laughs> I think they like you. Oh. <laughs> what, um, what drugs can you take to help that? Not, it... Nothing for diving, really. No, it's um, not like cycling. It's, you can't... No, it's not an absolute power, it's not an absolute endurance, it's not an absolute anything. Like Because yeah. it's a sport of such precision, it's really just about the preparation. There's nothing you can do to um, enhance that. But you weren't thinking, don't stuff it up at that moment. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was um, focused on these really um, important keywords that I needed to make sure that I executed every time a little bit perfectly. So Somersault. You, yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> tall to make sure that I jumped up straight, two and a half twist to make sure I did the right number of twists, <laughs> um, round pike and then fast arms. But, you know, as well as those um, words that I was thinking throughout the dive in each section, mm -hmm. I also imagined two brick walls on either side of me as I was standing on the platform to make sure that I didn't, you know, jump wow. off oh, wow. crooked. So all that's going through your mind yeah. in that split second of yeah. diving. And you, like, when you're in the zone, like, all of the people on either side of you fade away, like, all of the sounds just go away. All you can hear is just the sound of the water sprinkling onto, onto the surface of the pool and, like, nothing else. And time slows down. And it's like, it really is, you know, that slow-mo that you mm. see in movies. Right. Mm. So when you actually completed the dive, did you know that you nailed it? It or felt did... good. It felt okay. good. But, you know, it was like you do this thing where you roll underwater to, like, suck the splash uh -huh. down with you. And, like, it's just a fraction of a second, like, a fraction of a degree as to whether it's too much or, like, with a big splash okay. or just perfect. Yep. And so, you know, I was teetering right on that little bit. And I didn't know if it was amazing or if it was that little bit. And so I was, like hovering underneath the surface of the water, <laughs> scared for, like, for ages, going, have I, haven't I, have I? And when I couldn't, when my lungs wouldn't let me stay underwater any longer, I broke the surface and everyone was going bananas, wow. like, people jumping wow. up and down. It was just the most electric, electric atmosphere. That's awesome. like when I did a bomb with a pool on my bay, this game. <laughs> yeah. 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 Similar kind of atmosphere. Yeah, I do that with a horse. When you do a horse, you, yeah. then you have to ask, you have to, you come up, was it was good? It good? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. <laughs> was it good? Was it good? <laughs> Same feeling in that. Can you do your horseshoe? Can you do? I can. I'm actually. I'm a. I do a pretty mean coffin. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know, straight down. Feet. Straight no, down. No, no, no. Yeah, like yeah. on your back, so that you scoop and you get all of your backsplash that comes up. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. 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 I see but, that. And I also like to make it a bit fancy and do a double flip into a coffin. Oh. Nice. <laughs> oh, the way to go, isn't it? If you want to die, go out in style. Hey, wait, they should put it in the Olympics, maybe. That'd be nice. Just a little a bomb and a horse thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there a layback? I don't remember. There's, what's the layback one where you just jump and you... I don't know where this is going. But <laughs> <laughs> just waffling, by the way. Well, look, I think we've talked enough about diving. Let's, let's see it in action. Uh, Matthew, you've beaten some of the best in the world from the platform, but are you up? to an Iron Robin level dive special. <laughs> so, let's find out with a diver. A dive off. All right. Guys, Jesus, let me just say I look good with a gold medal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, want that for, I want that for shot put. Just uh, one of many. <laughs> Guys, this, this is how we play. Jamoan, Matthew and Dave will recreate one of the best dives from the 2014 World Cup and Servette will be the judge. Let's have a look at the dive they'll be performing. So, uh, a degree of difficulty oh, here. Oh, oh. Yeah, very oh. Legs, arms, movement, a lot, lot of complicated facets to this. A very nuanced performance. 
Lovely so, uh, okay, right. Think of that on top of all the other things. Tuck the arms, duck the head, right. suck the Stand splash tall. back in. Yeah. Let's see Jamal go first. Contestant number one. Jamal. Don't forget the subject. Don't forget the splash. Be in the zone. Don't have too much noise happening. Just do it. Oh! Oh, wow! Oh, oh the beauty of live television, ladies and gentlemen. Jamal, I'm watching replay. Oh, my God. Oh, I think that's when you go off the oh side, isn't it? That's so, uh, judges, what did we make terrible. of that elegant and uh, erudite funny. performance? He missed the mat, so I'm going to give him... He missed the mat. Seven and a half. Oh, seven and a half. Yeah. OK, Dave. Or better that feet. <laughs> I can't compete against that. Dave's looking casual. Is he focused? Is he in the zone? Oh, 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 oh. oh. oh a bit, bit more razzle dazzle, a bit more showbiz. Oh. Did he have the uh, elevation? Did he have the thing? Let's let's have a look at that again. <laughs> he was oh, better. There we go. Dave, Dave O'Neill. Judges, what do we make mm, of that? Mm. I wasn't too impressed. Oh, oh. No. 4.5 no. levels. Is that a Gold medalist Matthew Mitchum, can you equal oh, that? Yeah. Don't, don't feel nervous, you've got a <laughs> You've got a 7.5. Oh, God. Hey, I'll no, get no, it, no, no, no. get it. One more, one more, one more. Let's do this more. properly. Oh, Big oh, upstage yes. by a Good dummy. Job, and uh, Jamal. Um, Matthew Mitchum. Most importantly, <laughs> judges, what do we score this? Uh, he won. He won. It's Beijing all over again. All right, Matthew will be back here as we show. We'll be back after break for more of the full resilience. It hurt. Okay, the World Cup is very big business, and to help us understand just how big, please welcome player agent and marketing expert, Lewis Leo Carnes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm Lewis from the head of Lewis is in the World Cup. So, has it been a successful World Cup from a point of view of marketing? Uh, look, definitely. This World Cup um, has generated about $4 billion for FIFA. How much? For $4 billion. <laughs> About 1.4 billion in sponsorship, uh, 1.7 in television revenue, and about 900 million odd in, in licensing and, and merchandising. And it's about 66% higher than the previous World Cup really? in South Africa. Wow. Just wow. in four years. Yeah, it's wow. amazing. Without the sale of Vuzu Whalers, or whatever they're called. Yeah, so that's yeah. good. Vuvuzela. Vuvuzela. You just made that word up. <laughs> I can't play it, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have little rattle things. <laughs> they had little rattle things that they, that they think they banned. Mm. No, they started the World Cup with the Rattlers, but they got too annoying, so they killed it. Thankfully, for all soccer sure. supporters, football supporters. Uh, now, Leo, obviously, the US is such a key market for the World Cup, and we've heard all sorts of records being broken there. I think more people watched the uh, USA versus Portugal game than, than some of their major, like, NA... Oh, wow, I don't know any sports. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl. Bowl. It's bigger than the no, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, Vuzu Vuzu yeah, I mean, the USA have really uh, it's become a sport, a big sport in America since this World Cup, I think. No it? doubt. I mean, the, the nation mm. basically stopped for that, for that match. Mm. Um, and, and I think the major reason we're talking about this 66% 60, 60 increase from the previous World Cup is because uh, the time zone in North America and, and South America, it's been favourable mm. for Asia. Mm. So, you know, bigger audience commands bigger television revenue for FIFA mm. um, and, and hence why that, that increase. Now let's look at the players themselves. Now obviously we have these great iconic moments of World Cups. We saw Timmy Cahill's goal as a screamer. We saw James Rodriguez. How important are those individual moments for a player? So in terms of their valuation, <laughs> is, it, is it something that something like that takes you to the next level? Look, with Tim Cahill, he's been basically the number one guy in yeah. Australia commercially uh, for a number of years. 
Um, so I think it maintains that level for him. It was a phenomenal goal, phenomenal moment. With Rodriguez, um, he's been the standout player mm. of this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but he isn't a guy who came along, uh, you know, only, only a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he's yeah. been a successful player at his club um, in, in Monaco. Mm. Played 30 games, scored nine goals. Mm. But what this World Cup does is it takes him to another level. But what he needs to do is two things. He needs to maintain that level mm. because it's sort of Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi level. And I think he probably needs to move clubs. Mm -hmm. If he's going to cash in on the sponsorship side, he needs to be at a massive club like a Real Madrid, a Barcelona, a Man United, Man Liverpool. City. Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Far as is gone. Because the, the, the French League, with all due respect to the French League, it's not a visible, a yeah. highly visible league. And it's important that he plays in a league where he's highly visible. Well, but Cahill would be most famous here, being a soccer roo. Would he get massive deals here? Like, is he going to be the face of Coles or something like that? Sorry, or Cahill? <laughs> yes. Cahill? He oh, look, he, he has a number of corporate partnerships that he's had Already? for a number of years. Yeah, and, and he'll maintain that. He, Like I say, he's the number one guy. And with Harry Kuehl retiring, Mark Schwartz mm. is sort of moving on. Mm. I mean, those guys have moved into some other business. I mean, yep. Mark Schwartz has done a, a, a very successful tab corp campaign, um, according to Tab Corp. Yeah, yeah. It's about $120 million worth of wagering um, on, on, the, on the World Cup, more than an, an entire AFL season. Yeah, so wow. it's, it's big money. So those guys move into other categories, but Tim's number one. Now you mentioned, yeah. so we're saying uh, someone like James Rodriguez, obviously you can put yourself in the shop window. Conversely, someone like Luis Suarez, how much damage does an incident that happened in this World Cup do to his brand? He has lost one sponsorship yep. as a result of that incident. And he only had Can't two test. sponsors. Right. He had Adidas and he had a poker company called Triple uh, Eight Poker. Mm -hmm. uh, they sacked him on the spot. Wow. And Adidas have, um, have given him his final warning. He's got a mouth guard too. <laughs> yeah. So he's got a new line of opportunity. What, what, what about merch? Like, I mean, I'm an ideas man. Can you put me through to some of the players? I've got some great ideas for merch. Um, these are uh, Socceroos fans' rose-coloured glasses. So you put these on. <laughs> oh, we won! We're through to the final. <laughs> Check that out. That's awesome. Um, okay, got some more. Um, the Dutch. I think you're The Dutch coach, Louis. Um, these socks and sandals outfits for the. Uh, for the... <laughs> that, that's. Um, no, well, that's, that's just the informal one for, for black tie events. We've got this one, the socks and sandals one. For the... <laughs> um, but speaking of Suarez, we've got this cookbook he's put out. Um, Rustic Italian, and <laughs> it's some of the recipes in here, like, like that you. one. He likes that one to eat. Um, and hang on, where's Very the main nice. course? There's the main course. It's a, uh, it's a shoulder dish. So, uh, right no good or fifteen percent raw beef there on, on all fronts. <laughs> you're, you're, making, you're making a killing there. So, Leo, how how, um, how powerful are the sponsors when it comes to the games? Oh, very, very powerful. Um, I mean, there have been incidents in the past, um, uh, most notably, uh, uh, you know, Ronaldo yeah. was um, in a previous World Cup, the, the great Brazilian, um, apparently unable to play due to illness, but, uh, you know, the rumour is that he was forced to by, by a sponsor. Oh, they yeah. made him, didn't they? 98, 98 World Cup final, Ronaldo sick before the game. Uh, and, yeah, exactly as you say, the, the rumour is that, that people said, rang to the Brazilian headquarters and said, well, He's got to play. And how did he play? Not very well. Awful. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, there, there is pressure, um, you know, uh, occasionally that's, that's, you know, put on players and, and national federations as well who are forced to play in certain markets if, if they're sponsored by, by big companies mm -hmm. uh, because that's good for the brand to be, ex you know, to, to be expanding the brand in, in, in certain territories. Mm -hmm. So they're very powerful sponsors. Mm -hmm. Just very quickly, uh, let's talk women's football. We've got a national team player on the panel with us. Uh, the game seems to be growing at grassroots levels. Is it is the product there? Does it get the support commercially that it deserves in Australia? It doesn't get the support it deserves. Why not? Um, I have two young daughters, and I wish it did because they love the game. Why do you um, do that? Look, it's it's uh, basic economics. Uh, until a television broadcaster embraces the game, throws money into it for, for mm. the acquisition of the rights of, of the games, and with that comes sponsors, that filters down to player payments. It's, it's unlike, unlikely to happen. So mm -hmm. we need sponsors and broadcasters yes. to, to work SBS, together. SBS, get behind women's soccer. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Leo Pass. And welcome back to the Form a World Cup Special Cup medley, Matthew Mitchum. This is a little mashup I put together just for the show. 
Put your flags up in the sky And wave them side to side Show the world where you're from Show the world we are one, one in the saddle when you forget up oh, oh when you forget up yeah yeah zamina zangalewa this time for africa zamina mina oh oh waka waka yeah yeah zamina mina zangalewa this time for africa here we go One fight and a million eyes Full hearts gonna work so hard Shoot for the stars Fist rays up towards the sky Tonight with the world unite World unite, world unite For the fight, fight, fight One night with the world unite World unite, world unite Hey, 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 hey For us are, for us are Come on, sing with me Hey, 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 ole, ole Come shout it out with me Hey, 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 come on out here Side to side Show the world where you're from Show the world we are one One love, one life Ole, ole, ola Ole, 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 ola Ole, 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 ola for the full Brazilian code word competition with prizes supplied by Samsung. Tonight's code word is Viva. To enter, go to sbs.com.au forward slash the full Brazilian and follow directions. You'll have a chance to win a daily prize of a Samsung Note tablet, a Galaxy S5 smartphone or a curved television. You'll also get the chance to win the SBS and Samsung The Full Brazilian Superstar Experience, where our major prize winner will receive an all-expenses-paid five-star trip to Sydney for four and a bundle of Samsung goodies totalling almost $36,000. Terms and conditions at sbs.com.au forward slash The Full Brazilian. Jogo 
was wrong, didn't it? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No! No, 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 no. It's not over yet. Turn it on. Practice the dive. <laughs> nice. Have you ever played in any World Cup? I have played in the World Cup. We played in Mexico. I played with Adam Scott. He was very good. I was average. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Where did Brazil go in the golf in the World Cup? How did they go in that? Well, I think they really struggled because they didn't make a team. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy playing football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But does that interfere with your swing? Nah, you're all good. Nice. Oh, that's nice, though. Go! Pressure's on, mate. You're on, on the dance floor. Yeah. All right, here we go. Come on. Just kept going, didn't it stay? Sit, sit. Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well done. Are you good this for the win? Yes. No, he's missed it! <laughs> <laughs> Argentina two, Australia one. Thank you, Mr. Australia. It's time for an infallible full Brazilian dance off to predict who will make the World Cup final Brazil or Germany. Bra uh, representing Brazil is Rayson and Chris from Capoeira Farol da Bahia. <laughs> is Rowan and Andrew from Australian German Folk Dance Group. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Brazil. Matthew and David and Rich. <laughs> Brazil? Brazil, show us what you got. What's wrong, Richard? What Cold. have you done? What have you done? Call the ambulance. You're all right? You're all right, okay. okay. <laughs> and the winner is Brazil! Yeah. All right, thank you all for watching all our cats. Keep watching, we've got the Tour de France. It's on all week. We shall see you Wednesday for more of the full Brazilian. Thank you and good night.